All righty. So some of these, uh, today we're going, I should tell you what we're doing today. Today we're going to solve some equations with rational exponents. Remember, a rational is just a ratio. So it's a fraction. One half is a ratio. Five thirds is a ratio. So the exponents are going to be fractions. Basically, that's what rational exponents means. The exponents are going to be fractions. As you can see, we have a fraction here and a fraction here. None here, but they're still fractions. So we've got to do, know a couple things for this. We've got to make sure the bases are the same. We've got to make sure we know our rules for exponents when we're multiplying exponents. That's basically what we're doing here. And then we've got to understand what equals means. This has got to be equal to this. So I, the first thing I have to do is make sure all the bases are the same. So 2, 2, and 2. I have to make sure the bases are the same because the rules only work when the bases are the same. Okay, so step number one, bases are the same. So number two, I'm going to try to combine like um, these so that I only have two to some power. Because if I had two to the fifth equals two to the y, then I would know y is five. Because equals means they're the same. And if that one's a five, I'd know that one was a five. So I try to get it like that, to get it where it's just one variable over one base equals a base with some number. So I have to remember what I do. Well, when I multiply two bases, I add their exponents. So I'm going to have x plus 3, I mean x over 3 plus x over 2. So I rewrote this with one base, and I added their exponents. I mean, I really didn't add them, but I'm going to. I just want to show you that that's the expression. Equals 2 to the fifth. Well, now that I have the bases the same, then these have to be equal. Because that's the only way to get that equation to be true. So I rewrite it like this. So there's a couple ways to solve this. One is to get a common denominator and multiply everything by the common denominator. But you may not have done that before. So I'm just going to show you how to do it by adding the fractions. You should all have added fractions before. So to add fractions, what I do is I find a common denominator. So hopefully you know that the common denominator is 6. That means I have to rewrite each of these expressions with denominator of 6. And when I do that, I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number because then I'm not changing the expression. So I get 2x over 6. And then on this one, I multiply by 3 over 3, which again, I'm not changing it because 3 divided by 3 and 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So I'm just switching it to an equivalent fraction. So that's 3x. And then I can combine them. That's 5x over 6. So we're going up here now. 5x top times top. I mean, when I'm adding, I add the top. The bottom stays the same. 5x over 6 equals 5. And then I just divide both sides by 5 6. There's one way to do that. There are lots of other ways. You could multiply by the reciprocal. But anyway, I get x equals 6. And if you um, don't remember how to divide that, so let me show you. 5 divided by 5 6 is the same as 5 times 6. 5 6 is the same as 5 times 6 fifths. So the division sign changes to multiplication. We flip the fraction. 30 divided by 5 is 6, or 5 divided by 5 is 1 times 6. Anyway, the answer is 6. Okay, a little bit complicated. I'll show you a different way to do it on the next one. I'll show you how to just multiply both sides by the common denominator, and then you can figure out which one you like. So first check, are the bases the same? Yes, they are. So I'm going to rewrite it so that it's one base with an exponent equals another base with an exponent. So because there was multiplication going on and the bases were the same, I can add the exponents. So now I know that x plus 2 plus, I'm sorry, x over 2 plus x over 5 equals 8. Because if these are equal, then that has to be true. So this time I'm going to find the common denominator and multiply each term by the common denominator. So common denominator is 10 because that's what 2 and 5 both go into. So I'm going to multiply by 10. Notice I have to do it on each term. So 10 divided by 2, right? I've got 10x divided by 2, that's 5x. I've got 10x divided by 5 is 2x. And I've got 8 times 10, which is 80. So that gets rid of the fraction right away, and it makes it a little simpler. So some people like to do it that way, to multiply both sides by the common denominator. You might not have learned that yet, but hopefully you have. So I get 7x equals 80. I divide both sides by 7, and I get x equals 80 sevenths. And that is my answer. And yes, it's OK to have a fraction. All right, let's try another one. So the first thing I need to check is my bases. Are they the same? 
No, they are not the same. So I have to figure out, usually I take the biggest one, and this is just the beginning level, so they probably won't give you super hard ones, although you might think they're hard. Um, I'm trying to get this 64 to be 4 to some power. I'm going to change it. I still want it to equal 64, but I just want to know what 4 to some power equal, 4 to what power equals 64. So if you're not sure, like I'm, I know it's 3, but if you didn't know, then I would say 4 times 4 times 4, 64. So see how it's 3 4s? So that means it's 4 cubed. And you could just keep going until you figured it out if it was a bigger number. So this is still 64. So this is the exact same left side. I just changed it so the bases are the same because I can't use any of my rules or I can't figure out what equation to make unless the bases are the same. So now, remember the rule says if I have a power raised to a power, I multiply. So I know that this times that is equal to this. So 3 times x plus 1 has to be equal to x plus 7 if this is going to be true. So I'm going to use my distributive property. So I get 3x plus 3 equals x plus 7. And then I'm going to solve that linear equation. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides because I want all my x's on this side, all my numbers on that side. Divide by 2 and x equals 2. So, and, and I didn't show you this on the other ones, but if you wanted to see if you were right, you could go to your calculator and say 64, and then you could, that um, little, that's called a caret, this little thing right here, and that raises it to a power. So I'm going to put it in parentheses because I said x was 2, which would mean 2 plus 1 is 3. So on the left side, it's going to be cubed. And so that's 262,144. And I'm just going to make sure that if I put the 2 right there, so 4 to the 9th, that equals the same thing. So I'm going to say 4 to the 9th, and it also equals 262,144. It's just a way to check to make sure I know I'm right. It's an easy check and well worth it to get the question right on a quiz or a test. All right, so are the bases the same? No, they're not. So I've got to change 16 into 2 to some power so that I can solve the rest of this. So what power? So 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So there were four of them, so I'm going to say 2 times 4. I mean, sorry, 2 to the fourth power. And then there's still that x minus 3 out there. So I know that these guys are going to have to be equal to these guys because the bases are the same and there's an equal sign. So I'm going to say 4 times x minus 3 has to be equal to x minus 6. So I'm going to multiply using my distributive property. And then I'm going to move my x's to this side. I'm going to skip a step there. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So and I'm going to divide by 3. So x equals 2. Same as last time, but just coincidence. <laughs> OK. So moving on. Now it gets a little more challenging. We have to remember what that means when it, a number's in the denominator. So it means that, remember, if we were to write it as an exponent, it would have a negative exponent. So how could I, um, well, first of all, I'm going to say, did you notice that the base was 4 here, that the base was 2 here, 4 here, the base was 2 here? So most of the time, you are not, they're not going to go crazy. You're going to have a base of a 2, a 3, a 4 four or a five. Usually they don't go beyond that when we're starting out at this level. So you just test. I know those aren't even, so I'm going to, I know um, nine is three squared. Now watch what I do here. Nine is three squared, but for it to be in the denominator, that would have had to have been a negative, right? Negative three squared. I'm sorry. It would have been three squared down here. When I move it up, it becomes negative because exponents like, negative exponents like to move it. So if it's negative down here, up in the top, it's going to be negative. I'm sorry, did I say that wrong? <laughs> if it's positive downstairs, it's going to be negative upstairs. So because I want it upstairs, I don't want a fraction here. I just want 3 to some power. So 1 ninth is 3 to the negative 2. But we also had this little expression out here. So we're going to actually end up multiplying there. And then 243, again, if you don't know what it is, you can just keep going. 3 times 3, and then times 3. That's 3 of them. That's 4 of them. Whoops. That's 5 of them. So 5. So this is 3 to the 5th down here, but I want it back up in the numerator, so I'm going to change it to a negative. 
and then my um, fraction that was already there stays. So now I know these guys have to equal each other in order for this to be true. So I have negative 5 times negative x over 3 equals negative 2 times negative x over 2 plus 1. That should have been a bigger 2 there. Okay, so now I'm just going to multiply, distribute over here and multiply over here. So I know that two negatives when I'm multiplying, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm going to get a 5x over 3 on this side. I'm going to distribute here. So uh, a negative 2 times a negative x is a positive 2x over 2. And then over here, I'm going to get a negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. So if you don't notice this, you'd think your common denominator was 6, but I noticed that these two cancel out. So I really have 5x over 3 equals x minus 2. So then my common denominator becomes 3. So I'm going to multiply each term by 3 to get rid of my fractions. So this 15 divided by 3 gets me 5x equals, and that's 3x minus 6. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add, sorry, the 6 is already there. I'm going to subtract 3x. 5x minus 3x is 2x. If 2x equals negative 6, then x equals negative 3. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> You're thinking maybe not. Okay, so then um, when I see a 36, I think 6. So sometimes they probably will give you 6s. Here we go, we got 6s. So 6 squared is 36, but since it's in the denominator and I want to make it go up, remember the first step is to get the bases the same, so I need this as a 6. Um, I know that has to be a 6, otherwise you couldn't do this problem. When you get to Algebra 2, you'll learn how to do it when the bases aren't the same using logarithms, but here we're just using bases. So 6 to what power? Well, so here, get my calculator out. I know that 6 times 6 is 36, so I'm going to multiply it by 6, and I see, oh, that's 216. That's three sixes. So I'm going to change this to a negative 3, because that would have been a 3 down there. But I moved it up, so it would have been a negative 3. x plus 1. And now I'm going to set these equal to each other. So I'm going to get negative 2 times x minus 4 equals negative 3 times x plus 1. And I'm going to use my distributive property. So I get negative 2x plus 8. Watch the negative negative there. And negative 3x minus 3. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. I'm going to get x. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. And I get x equals negative 11. And those are the examples for today. So hopefully you can just go really slow. You can make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure the bases are the same. You cannot go any further until the bases are the same. And then you just got to set their exponents equal to each other. You got to remember about negative exponents. You got to remember about adding when it's being multiplied. So there's a lot of little things to remember. If you don't remember your exponent rules, this is going to be really tough. But hopefully you do. Write them down. And um, they were on the video before, so if you don't know them, Use your notes. Good luck. M squared signing out.